And since this is a university, it's obviously not just about faculty and staff. There are students whose education is on the line. So how are the students being impacted? Yeah, we we heard from some parents of students at St. Augustine's who said that their children have not gotten the financial aid refunds that they were owed. And, uh, and so you see that that money is, is trickling down to having a problem with the students as well. We did hear from the Student Government Association president during the press conference on Monday. She stood next to the interim president there and and broke down in tears, got really emotional saying that she chose to come here. Like this is, or this is where she uh, and wanted to be and that the university opened its arms to her and and she doesn't see herself anywhere else, but she understands, too, like this, that these issues do affect the students. And um, so the, some of the students even said that they weren't getting their money, but some of them also understand they owe the university money, that this is not just – you're not just going to college for free, and the university hadn't been uh, maybe keeping account as much as they should of collecting the money owed from the students as well. So it, it does seem like it's an issue that's been going on for a while, but at the end of the day, it, it does affect – Every student that walks on the campus there, of if they can go to a class, if it's going to be maintained, if the buildings are maintained. Um, so these are things that affect them every day. And you briefly just touched on this about that moment during Monday's press conference when you asked the two student representatives to kind of share their thoughts because they are being affected by this. And it was this very emotional mm-hmm. moment, not only for that student, but then following it for the interim president. He had some emotions as well. Can you share some of what they both said? Yeah. Uh, Ariana White, who is the Student Government Association president, um, one of the things she said is, you know, it's not always where you start, it's where you finish. And so they're standing by, they're standing behind their university. She uh, talked about how she came to to the university. They accepted her because she didn't have the greatest grades in high school and, and maybe wouldn't have gotten into a lot of different uh, other schools. And so she really defended the university and said, you know, I can't imagine going anywhere else. And She's hoping to be able to graduate with an accredited university degree at the end of this this school year. And um, that's one of the big things that they're fighting for is to make sure they maintain the accreditation that allows them to issue those degrees. Um, so the president, the interim president, also got emotional saying, you know, he, he came here too, knowing this was going to be a challenge. Uh, he is here to raise money. He is here to get the community support and to to right this ship that has been in in the wrong direction here, it seems like. So it does seem like everyone is on board with this effort and this mission. It, It just looks like such an uphill challenge from the outside. And to his credit, he stood there for 30, Mm -hmm. 35 minutes minutes, and took a number of questions from the media. He decided to answer these questions and really hit them head on. Right. And that was something we were trying to get at last week when we first found out about the university staff not being paid. And this message that went out, it was an email from the interim president that said, you know, we, we won't be able to make our payroll at this time. Uh, you know, we apologize for the uh, continued delay um, and that they were trying to get money from le- selling some of the land. And it, it just was a, this very cold kind of vague message, I guess if you could say. If you get that as an employee, you think about it, your boss sends you an email saying you're not going to get paid on time. And we're trying to figure out some things. And it, it, it didn't give a d- clear direction. And so he took these questions today, you know, maybe a couple of days later than we would have hoped that he did. And But he did answer everything. I mean, 35 minutes of it, there there would seem to be no question that he turned away. He, he did not say no comment ever. He, he answered them. And, and it made some admissions that, you know, that there are going to be job cuts. They are expecting a smaller incoming freshman class next year because of these, uh, these challenges. So, and even admitted they may not make the next payroll. And so I felt like he was very open with it. And they're trying to understand what's going on here. And regarding that email, he actually said that that was something a coward does. He was like, I Uh should be looking them in the eye and telling them this, which I thought was really fascinating. Right. You don't always hear that kind of openness uh, from a a leader of a major university like that. So I did feel like he took the questions head on and answered them as best as he could. And it sounds like there is just a lot to untangle. He only came into this position as interim president in December after the board fired the previous president. So he's in he's new to this. It's two months in here and he's still trying to figure out how do you move this forward? There's a lot to untangle and we'll talk about that more after this break.